Um, my name's Craig. I work at Coordinates in Auckland, like Tom said. Um, and uh, I am a programmer. I fiddle around with data in lots of different ways. Um, Coordinates is a company that has a lot of customer data. Um, we have a website where we scrape some data off the internet, but a lot of our data is provided by customers for because they have to or want to supply it for free or for sale or whatever. Uh, we display it on a map, we do things with it, we provide APIs around it, that kind of thing. Um, since we don't control the data the customer does, um, that can get um, interesting because you know, people provide all sorts of different things. Um, sometimes it makes sense, other times it doesn't. Um, we make it available in different projections, so customers will provide their data in a projection that makes sense to them, but it can be downloaded by others in lots of other projections, in lots of other formats. Here's a layer. Uh, you can go to that URL if you want to see it, but I'm not particularly interested in the data. I'm interested. Uh, I'm interested in the geometries because this talks about the anti-meridian. Um, but this is provided by MFE, which is a government organization, one of our customers. And it's a some hydrography class data. Um, and um, you'll note that, if you can see that, it's very small. But anyway, this is an EPSG 3994. And that can be. That's cool, I guess. Um, what is that? That is a projection. It's a fairly normal Mercator projection. Covers an area around New Zealand, or wait a second, what's going on there? It kind of looks like it doesn't cover New Zealand, but covers everything else. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, epsg.io is this handy website. You can find out about projections. Um, well, that, that can't be right because our data is in New Zealand, isn't it? So let's find out what's going on there. So we'll start with this. What does projected bounds mean? Um, there's a whole bunch of numbers. Basically, these numbers are the, the numbers you might expect to see when you get data in this projection. So I'll put them on the, the, the edges of the image. You can see here that the x values, as you go to the east, increase from about 4 million to about 7 million and that the y values as you go to the north also increase from minus 6 million to minus 2 million. Um, that's great, makes sense, different projections do it different, this one does it like that. Uh, that's fine. Now I'm going to reproject this data, or actually I'm not, I'm just going to change the numbers, uh, into WGS84 which is a global projection, it's not really a projection, but uh, it's what you might be familiar with when you talk about where things are on the Earth, there's degrees. Um, and so those numbers translate into these numbers when you're talking about degrees. On the left, you have 155 degrees, I guess east. Uh, on the left, you have minus 170 east, which is to say 170 west. And, and it, so they, they, they still increase as you go to the north, bottom to top, minus 25 to minus 60. Wait. Other way around. Okay, yeah. I obviously screwed that slide up. Um, they're supposed to still increase as you go to the north. Um, <laughs> but there's something weird going on when you go across to the right. So they, they no longer seem to increase. Uh, and of course the trick is that they do increase until you cross 180. And then all of a sudden you go from 180 to minus 180 and everything breaks. Uh, this is the anti-meridian, it's a real pain, um, but we have to deal with it if we want to be able to render this data that we've reprojected, because, um, yeah, I mean, otherwise we'll just have a mess. So I'm going to just go back to this for a sec. Um, what this website has done is, is possibly, they might have represented this red box thing as four, four things. They might have said, um, well, this is a really common way of representing a box, by the way. I don't want to blame anyone or say it's, it's silly, but it, um, you, you might want to represent a box with four numbers. You might say min x, min y, max x, max y. Um, and that's great, except in this case, the min x is minus 170, 
and the max x is 155. And so this way of representing a box, if you're going to do this in your spatial software, is going to cause you a little bit of ambiguity, because that can represent two different boxes. Um, instead, I would say probably if you want to represent a box, maybe you should do it this way. Maybe you could represent it as west, south, east, north, or I guess left, bottom, right, top. Um, and if you do it this way, it's quite clear what the numbers mean. So then this box is no longer ambiguous. It represents one specific box on the Earth. Um, and so maybe that's what's going on here. I haven't looked at it, but it, it could be that one. Um, let's have a look at our data again. Let's try and reproject it to a global coordinate reference system. I've been talking about WGS84, but uh, this one is actually spherical Mercator, or what you might see on a Google map. Or um, I, I just kind of use those interchangeably. But um, and this is what we got when we did that in QGIS. QGIS. I was anyway. Um, so we took that data from EPSG 3994, and we said, "Oh, just just display it." And, and and spherical Mercator, and, and this happened, and it's a bit confusing, and the first few times I encountered this, I probably just threw up my hands in despair and walked off. Um, but we can fix this, and um, for what I do for a day job, I, I have to fix this. We have to render this stuff on a web map, and it has to work, and it has to look good. Um, and so I spent quite a while messing around with this. Um, let's try and fix it. The first step, I guess, is to figure out that it's happened because computers are a bit dumb unless, they, unless we tell them exactly what to know, um, what, how to find out what has happened, they won't be able to know. So I'm going to start with this. Here we have the geometry before we re reproject it. We're just, I'm just simplifying this down to one geometry instead of a whole layer. Um, and you can see it's got numbers in the millions. I've just put the x coordinates on here, not the y's, because I don't care about those particularly. Um, so this is in our EPSG 3994. And then after we reproject, we end up with this thing. So now the, the numbers are in degrees. Um, but you can see that everything above 180 degrees east has <coughs> kind of wrapped across the world 360 degrees to the left. And that's why we ended up with all those lines all the way across the world. Um, and so that's a mess. We can tell it's broken. Can computers tell it's broken somehow? Uh, I guess the one thing to note about this is that when we reproject, it happens one point at a time. So the computer will look at a point at 179.9 and say, OK, that's, you know, that's 179.9. When it sees something that's just to the east of the anti-meridian, it wants to reproject it into a range that's between minus 180 and positive 180. And it does that. And that's why we end up with this. It doesn't know that it's that point is right next to another point, which is just reprojected. Um, and so this is our situation. So we have to fix it after the fact. Um, how do we do that? Let's have a closer look. This polygon, it turns out, here are the, the indices of all the points. And you can see that this polygon is defined in a, in a clockwise manner. Um, and then after we break it by reprojecting it, we can have a look at this. Here's all the same points in the new coordinate system. This is a bit ambiguous what kind of way around it is. But if you trace it around, you'll notice that most of the geometry by area is in this big broken bit over here. And that bit is actually now anti-clockwise. So overall, this polygon is now anti-clockwise. And so if we expect a geometry to be clockwise, it turns out that if suddenly it becomes anti-clockwise after we reproject it, we know that this has happened. It's, it's wrapped around the anti-meridian. It's kind of broken. Um, yeah. Of course, you have to know what to expect it to be in to start with. Um, the Open Geospatial Consortium defines polygons as anti-clockwise. So apparently, polygons should always be anti-clockwise. Uh, the, if there's holes, then they can be clockwise. But yeah, the, the exterior ring should always be anti-clockwise. Um, it's good to have standards so that we know 
how things behave and we can expect them to behave in a certain way and we can all agree on what's going to happen. Um, in this case, we agreed to completely ignore that standard uh, and, and practice all pretty much everything I've seen has got an, a clockwise exterior ring. I don't understand what's going on there. I just that, that's just how it is. And if you know what's going on there, please tell me afterwards. Actually, the the uh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Is, um, yeah. In practice, everything is always clockwise. So um, that's great. Um, <laughs> uh, where am I? At? Yeah. So I needed a way to fix this, and I couldn't find anything online. Which you'd think there'd be plenty of software out there that had dealt with this and plenty of people with data sets that had dealt with this. But um, I'm an engineer, so I get to reinvent the wheel sometimes, so that's nice. Uh, so I had to come up with an algorithm to fix it. Um, and w we went through a few iterations, and the first few performed terribly. And then I realized that it's actually probably not that complicated. The problem, to, sta to restate it, is that some of the points on the right hand side of the layer have shifted a long way to the left. And almost always they will now be the leftmost points of the layer. So I just thought some of the points on the left just need to be shifted back to the right. Um, so I guess the, the question is which points are those? And now luckily we know that they are on the left. Um, so we can just find a big gap. Um, so I basically sorted all of the x coordinates for all of the points in this feature, or even the whole layer, by you know just sorted them all in big list, and found a big gap. In this case, the gap is there. There's lots of gaps, but um, I find the biggest one, something like 359 point something degrees, and um, find all the points on the left, add 360 degrees to their coordinates. Now we have this. And this is all I need to render with. All I've got is a, you know, it's kind of what you might have expected to happen to start with if we'd projected um, the whole polygon at once instead of a point at a time. So the x coordinates go past 180 degrees. This is really useful for rendering. It may not be useful for some other things. And depending on the software you're using it with, you've got to be a bit careful which one you use. Um, for example, intersection testing, if you're clicking a point on a map that goes up to 180 degrees and you click you know, at minus 179 degrees, that may not intersect with this polygon anymore. Uh, so you may need to make copies of the polygon and intersect it with both to test what's going on. Um, cool. Well, that was fun. Um, turns out that's just one of the many things that can go wrong with anti-meridian. Uh, other ones are line strings are harder, or in some situations, mostly because they don't have that clockwise, anti-clockwise thing. So you kind of just have to guess sometimes. Someone might obey the OGC and you might not get a clockwise thing to start with. So um, I haven't seen that happen yet, but um, <laughs> maybe one day. Uh, Multi-geometries have more challenges because uh, if you have multiple polygon parts, and they are on different sides of the anti-meridian, you may want to also shift the parts so they're kind of next to each other or something like that. Um, and yeah, so this all works as my algorithm is perfect and flawless until some jackass is presenting at a conference and uploads a layer called the extent of Europe, which it turns out covers more than 180 degrees of the world. Uh, it, in case you're unfamiliar with world geography, Europe is actually about there. <laughs> um, and and it, it just all falls apart. So don't do that. Go, good luck. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, how does your system work in somewhere like um, Kiribati, which spans all hemispheres? <laughs> <laughs> Um, where is where is Kiribati? Um, well, it's, 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 it's like it, it, it borders 180, the yep. and, yeah. and it's in the northern hemisphere, northeast, northwest, and south, southwest hemisphere. I don't think we have any problems with 
northern versus southern hemispheres. Uh, it hasn't caused me any grief so far. Uh, I suspect it works fine. We've got some Fiji layers on some of our customer sites. Um, Anaki Fenua have some. Uh, and that all seems perfectly fine. We've got geometries themselves that cross the anti-meridian, but also just the layer in general and the bounding box and everything crosses that, and that all seems to work. It's been a challenge getting it that way, I must say, but yeah. Question there. Sort of a problem of trying to, I assume, trying to shoehorn into WGS or uh, the, the tools are all, that you're trying to display this in are all based around very limited sets of projections. Whereas if you think about the people who work in the polar areas, they've dealt with this forever. You know, all these tools don't show them what they're doing well at all. And, they're almost forgotten in the in the tool sets that are available, yeah. and they just project and, and have to live with projected data. Yeah, I suspect that's why I couldn't find a lot of stuff online about this. Is that a lot, depending on where you live and what data you have, this isn't a problem for that many people. And so, us in New Zealand, it is a huge problem for us with the Chatham Islands on the other side of projection. Most of our like national data sets span it, um, and yeah, Fiji. Alaska, Russia, you know, these, these sorts of places have issues with it. Have you, have you looked at what the polar people do? Do they deal with the same thing north and south yeah. across the pole? And, and, and some data sets that go beyond the pole as well? <laughs> yeah. 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 I haven't, but I'd be challenged by it, certainly. Yeah. 